Now here's an odd one. This is Xenon, an arcade game that looks more like a computer game and that's because it is. This is a game from the legendary Bitmap Brothers. This arcade version is dated 1987, meaning it came before the home release, which is said to have started life with the Atari ST, but I'm not sure about that, as the ST version is copyright dated 1989. Strangely though, this arcade version runs on Amiga powered hardware. Now I can tell you for a fact that if I saw this game in an arcade it wouldn't have been given a second glance, and I'm sure many of you think that too. So I can imagine this one being in pubs along with those quiz type machines and video golf. In the game you take the role of a Darian, a future space pilot in the Federation currently at war with a mysterious and violent alien species. Unlike most vertical scrolling shooters, the player's craft has two modes, a flying plane and a ground tank. The transition between the crafts can be initiated at almost any time during play, except for during mid and end of level boss sections, as well as certain levels where a certain mode is forced. Some destroyed enemies will release power ups to enhance your craft. Sadly, these seem to be craft specific, so having a fully decked out tank isn't going to do you any favours when controlling the spaceship. To be honest, as an arcade game this isn't very good, but as a computer game it's a reasonably good blast. Here we go with the home Amiga version. The first thing you'll notice is the copyright date of 1988, meaning it came after the arcade version. And as a result the gameplay has been tweaked a little and maybe not in a good way. The game starts you off with slower movement until you grab a speed up. It also seems to have had the difficulty ranked up a bit and sadly it's only got one button meaning that you must press the space bar to change craft type. Kind of annoying if you're not sitting on top of the Amiga. Coming the following year after the Amiga game is the Atari ST version, and oh man, this isn't a great port. While it basically looks just like the Amiga game, it sure doesn't sound as good, and oh man, is it bad when it comes to slowdown. It's like playing a Super Nintendo shooter. Still, I do feel that this ST version is less demanding thanks to the more lenient life bar.
Here we go with the MS-DOS version. This can run in either CGA, EGA, which we are using here, or Tandy 16 color mode. As far as ports go, this is reasonable. The music is lacking however, the sound effects are pretty well done. There is a nice bass to the explosions I feel. The scrolling is also rather smooth, not something you often see in older DOS titles. As for playability, well it's very much like the ST version, which is no bad thing. It is what it is, as they say these days. Okay, on to the 8 bit port, starting with the ZX Spectrum version, and what a nice surprise this is! The 48k version has no music, but we are playing the 128k version here, which features some pretty good tunes during gameplay. As for looks, well, I'm sure you can see that it's not bad at all. Detailed backgrounds and projectiles, which are easy to see. The game even plays pretty good too. There is quite a bit of slowdown in there and the turrets seem to lack any power up drops, but overall it's not bad at all. The MSX port is basically the ZX Spectrum version. Now the original release was apparently much worse than the version you are now seeing. It is said to have incredibly jerky scrolling, poor audio and only one button control, meaning you had to use the keyboard to change ships, even though the MSX has two independent fire buttons. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I could fight the original game only this enhanced version. First impressions on the Amstrad CPC port are good, reasonable sounds and nice colourful graphics. Then the game starts to move. Holy crap is this bad. The scrolling is so slow, it's so slow that you'd honestly think the game was broken. Actually it may be broken, I have no idea how the hell I'm meant to change into the spaceship. Not one button on the keyboard worked, and it certainly wasn't the joystick's fire button because that fired the guns of the tank. A terrible port if ever there was one. And 
and let's finish off with the Commodore 64 version. Now while this may look quite bland compared to the Amstrad CPC, I'm sure you can see how much smoother it is. In fact, it's probably smoother scrolling than the 16-bit versions. I'm not too keen on the audio mind you, but that's okay because this port plays really well. If only the energy bar was a little bigger. It seems it's easier to die in this port. And let's take a look at all those versions of Xenon running side by side. <laughs> <laughs> 